my friends, welcome back to another episode of MTD CNC North America. Today, as you can see, I am talking with a Citizen Machine MYY, and my buddy James has been kind enough to be my victim today. So James, thank you so much for being a part of MTD. Thanks for having me. Absolutely a pleasure. Now, we know this machine is incredible. We're looking at twin turrets, twin spindles. We have the great software of Esprit on here. We're looking at LNS over there. I mean, you're really putting it all together, but there we, we want to learn a little bit about what makes this machine unique sure. and why the people out there watching right now might want to look into a, a machine like this. Yep. So this right here is a machine where you can throw a lot at it. You have a 65 millimeter through bore on the spindle. It's all hand scraped box ways on every single axis. So that right there just means rigidity. So whether it's aluminum all the way up to ink and L, the machine has what it needs to handle that cut. And when you look at the turrets, even the turret assembly is hand scraped so that way the turret is fastened down in a really rigid manner so it can handle some pretty healthy cuts. And if you look at our live tooling, we have a 12 station turret and we have a five horsepower uh, live tooling motor powering these tank driven live tools. To give you a little bit of perspective on that, par for the course for live tooling is typically between one to three horsepower, even on some of our smaller Mianos and competition. So when the MYY came out, having that five horsepower on the live tooling, that was a, a pretty big upgrade. Absolutely. And you mentioned hand scraped, which I think is important to say over and over again, yeah, right? Is. Because it really makes a difference. It is. It but sets something, the machine apart. Yeah. And something that stuck out to me because a lot of people will go, we have a rigid product in this type of size, right? Yep. But then we go, well, what do you mean by rigid? Well, I can machine the crap out of aluminum, right? Yeah. But you mentioned Inconel. Yep. So we're talking about real rigidity oh, yeah. on this machine. Yep. High nickel super alloy. So the difference you get with the hand scraping versus grinding. So a lot of machines will say they're rigid because they have linear guides, which are all ground or they have box ways, but they're not hand scraped. So when you grind down metal, you're going to get it flat, but you're still going to have pockets on that surface. When you hand scrape it, you're ensuring a more uniform fit. It's a custom fit because every single axis is custom shaped together by an engineer in our Japanese facility. So what that does for you is it takes out the air pockets on the axes, makes the metal sit right on top of each other, gets rid of any of the resonance that you're gonna see when you're in cut, giving you a machine that can handle 65 millimeter. Awesome, and what are some of the benefits? Because turning traditionally has been one turret, maybe one spindle, maybe a twin spindle, but now we're starting to throw extra turrets in there, right? Sure. So what are some of the benefits of this? We can multitask, is that, that what, the direction so we're heading? On this machine, we can go up to three tools and cut, and we do that through superimposition, which is a feature that's unique to citizens. It's been on our Syncom Swiss machines for a significant amount of time. And when we picked up the Miano mill turn line, we brought it up to citizen standards and incorporated some of that technology on our Swiss machines that people know and love and put it on the Miano. So what superimposition does is it allows us to slave secondary axes to another axes in order to have multiple tools in cut. So essentially I can have two turn tools working on my main spindle and I can have a drill, a boring bar, a threading tool simultaneously threading on my sub spindle. What's really unique about this machine is the fact that it has an independent Z and X axis on the sub spindle. So that sub spindle will commonly slave to either turret in order to sync up and have three tools in cut. You can get really clever with the programming on a machine like this, that can't you? Can. you? They make it easy though. Even though the part we're doing today was programmed with the spree and we're doing some pretty fancy trochoidal tool paths, if you broke the part down and programmed it by hand, a more traditional tool path, you can still do it right here on the control. The control has what are called G600 superimposition codes. And what that does is it assigns the machining pattern for the machine. It says, hey, you know, we have two turrets here that can work on either spindle. Your G600 codes would tell the machine what turret is working where and when. And not only are they codes that set the pattern, but they also set synchronization. So when you have three tools and cut at once, there's a lot going on. And you'll see your sub spindle moving while the tool's in it and also working on the main spindle. And a lot of people walk up and think, how are you able to program what the sub spindle's doing when it's already working with the main, on the main spindle with the tool on that turret? And the answer to that is the superimposition codes. So the machine in the background is taking care of all the different acceleration and deceleration to keep that sub spindle slave to its current axis. So I just have to program three different tool paths in three channels, program it like I would any other machine and just use one G code at the top of that program to say, hey, we're doing things simultaneous right now. That James, ensures all my enslaving. I love when people read my mind because that was going to be my next question. So very well done there. <laughs> but the, what, what I want to talk about a little bit is when we think of turning, we certain oftentimes think of specific parts, typically round or, sure. you know, working from that angle, a horizontal angle, right? Yep. But a machine like this, correct me if I'm wrong, we can take some of our milling 
applications and throw it on here because we have the live tool and we have multiple turrets, we have Certainly. multiple spindles. So you can actually turn this into a machine that's gonna do all of those type of applications and reduce overall cycle times by taking it off of one machine and putting it on another machine and doing it all on one machine complete. Exactly, done in one is the saying and we do that here. So having two 12 station turrets, both that can have live tools, I can put in both radial and axial live tooling. I can put in live tooling that has one or two output spindles. So as far as features going apart, across this machine with 24, 24 stations and the capability to double up on some of those tool holders, I can machine a lot of features that aren't just a round on round part. So whether it's bosses, pockets, anything that has to get done, thread milling, I have the tools, I have the capability on this machine to get that done. Amazing, James, let me ask you. So I'm looking at this machine and I know that we're all fighting for what's called this skills gap right now. We're yep. all playing that game. So this is gonna allow us to do more but what's the flexibility like? And how about automation? Can we adapt? Is that pretty easy to adapt as well to create more flexibility in that? Certainly. So MCC, Maribeni Citizens Syncom, we do a lot of adaptation with automation. Uh, we put robot arms on some of our machines. We have in-house electrical and mechanical engineers. So we're able to assess a part for a customer that's high volume. And traditionally we like to run from bar stock with the bar feeder, because it's a nice easy way to keep pulling stock in and out of the machine and get you your finished parts. But there are times a customer has to come from a forging and you're not gonna load a forging in a machine with bar loader. So we work with companies like Vanek and Mitsubishi to incorporate their robotic arms and bin picking vision systems in order to get blanks in the machine and extract it from the machine. So. Well, now that you've blown my mind, I'm sure I'm not the only one. There's an audience out there right now feeling the same way, I am sure. So if they want to find out more about you, more about this machine, what's a website, socials, anywhere where you can guide them to allow them to do a bit more research on their own. Sure. Um, we have the Maribeni Citizen Syncom website. So that's an easy tab to pull up. And we have a lot of local distributors and uh, MCC centers throughout the country and, interna and internationally. So. Well, Easy James, to get a hold of. you are amazing, I and he has it. an amazing beard. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's the most important. thank you all for watching MTD CNC North America. This thank is you very James. much. This is Citizen. Stay tuned for some more great videos. Thanks for having me.